Kamala Harris says she's ready to serve, and the VP appears to be showing it by taking more of an interest in the Biden campaign. Now, that, according to a new CNN report that revealed Harris believes that she can save the president's re-election single-handedly. Her newfound initiative comes after top Democrats raised concerns about, quote, bedwetting in the president's inner circle, and after the VP was grilled by top Democrats for not doing enough. Sources saying, quote, there are even Democrats who still gripe that the best thing Biden could do for his chances would be to engage in the fantasy of dumping his vice president on the Ooh. ticket. But Harris has reportedly revealed that she still isn't worried about losing to former President Trump. Nope, the Veep fears that people will stay home on Election Day and that the Biden-Harris ticket will lose to, quote, the couch. Lawrence Jones, what say you? Well, I, I'll just remind people that the first person out of the Democratic primary uh, in 2020 was Kamala Harris. Uh, she couldn't win her own campaign. She has some punchy moments. She's good when she's been the attack person for administration. But when it comes to day-to-day -day issues, she just doesn't resonate with voters. She doesn't rep resonate with minority voters. She doesn't represent the Democratic Party as a large. I would not focus more on rebooting her own self, <laughs> border, root causes, and then maybe she can take on the big task of rebooting the failed campaign. I don't think she has what it takes. That's not what she's doing, though. Yeah. That's not what she's doing. No, I mean, yeah. she's going out. She's been going to college campus assembly since October, yeah. and she's been hammering the issue of women's rights and abortion. And that is where she is hanging her hat. And I'm sure that she thinks that that message is what is going to get them back into the White House for another four years. By the way, Biden is in California. He's actually flying out right now, two nights there, because they need what? Money. Mm -hmm. And at the donors, and I've heard this in New York as well, because he was here for a couple of private dinners here in New York, and those donors were like, What are you doing? Because I don't, you don't want to throw good money after bad if you're spending, you know, thousands, millions of dollars to back some candidate that you know is going to lose. And it's just not looking good for Biden. And that's an interesting point because let's throw up a poll here. We have 35% of people approve of Kamala Harris's vice presidency, 58% disapprove. And we've talked at length about how she has been surgical with the abortion message. Some find her very efficacious, but at the end of the day, clearly everyone thinks that she's failing in her job. So what do her speeches matter? So I think I figured out what's going on with Kamala Harris. Um, first, she's trying to show her commander in chief chops. She's meeting with King Abdullah. After Alexei Navalny died last Friday, she was the first person to speak for the White House, not the president. She's meeting with six governors to talk about the campaign. And then the CNN piece pops, and the CNN piece is all about Kamala Harris and how she's breaking through the Biden campaign bubble. I've got to imagine that was placed by her team, but two lines stood out to me, that she's pushing for changes in strategy and tactics with the campaign. So she's pushing for changes. And Harris has been a surprising and welcome change, according to those who have spoken to her. So is she trying to posture in case the Titanic goes down, that being the Biden campaign, that she was the one, she was the one meeting with governors, calling for change, meeting for stakeholders, and she wants the world to know it, hence the CNN piece. Wait, great, great segue, because, Morgan, I wanted to ask you about that. It, it tacks on to this. Her couch comment, is she setting up a reason other than her failure of a performance, that if they do lose, will she be able to say, look, I told you back then, it was because you voters didn't turn out. It's always about pushing away blame and responsibility. I, I think you and Kaylee are right. That's certainly part of it. Um, it takes effort to have historic low polling numbers as the vice president when, you know, your job is to, like, cut ribbons and smile and kiss babies. <laughs> so it takes effort to be that bad. Um, but also, you know, you look, it, interestingly, the vice presidency is the one position that the president can't fire constitutionally, right? That's why there's so much chatter, not only about Biden's vice president choice, but about who President Trump pick, picks as well. You can ask, you can apply, the person resigned, but you can't fire the vice president. In fact, um, you know, whenever Nixon appointed Gerald Ford, it's because Spear Agnew resigned, right? And he had to do that of his own volition. She's definitely not going to do that. So this is the ticket, my friends, and uh, we'll see, you know, what happens at the convention. But he's not going anywhere, and I think she's, a, listen, she's a tough lady. She's been in politics for a long time. I don't happen to think she's particularly great at her job, but she is looking at, she's the first uh, woman of color vice president. She is not going anywhere. She sees the presidency in her sights. Mm -hmm. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.